Hey, Debbie. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. How's everybody doing? Hi, Jackie. Hi, guys. Hey. It's good to see you. How's your new job going? Um, I've been very, very busy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm surprised to see you. Yeah. Um, I actually have the days off now that we do our videos, so I'll be able to be on all the time. Oh, great. Yeah. Hey, see, the universe made that happen. Yes. And Andy, how are you? Oh, I'm doing good. Doing good. Yeah. Uh, Getting excited. Um, I've had people ask me about our story contest. So people are, I had a few people asking me, where's the link? Where do I go? So that's good. So oh, that's good. exciting. Yeah. For you yeah. guys that don't know, we have a story contest with a $300 prize. Um, so for your gr good scary paranormal stories you can submit as many as you want uh, one at a time though at psychicfixes.com in the title bar says um the story story contest and get in for um a great prizes wonderful prizes but we have a great guest um coming on today uh reverend uh kev kevin lee so we want to get him in here in just a minute and so I do want to do his introduction. Um, we're doing really good, and we hope you guys come in on Friday the 13th because we're going to have a spooky show uh, this Friday. So I'm looking forward to that, to that a lot. But we do want to get started because this is a just a – when I first uh, was in contact with um, Reverend Lee, uh, it was amazing what I was hearing. And I can't wait to share that with you guys. And he's going to tell us all about it. But let me tell you just a little bit about him. He is a senior minister and spiritual luminary in leadership of the Metaphysical Chapel of South Florida. Now, that's in Fort Lauderdale. In addition to serving his ministry full time, he's a published author, a mystical researcher, and a metaphysical speaker. And academically, he continues to practice nursing anesthesia for almost 15 years. Now, that's an amazing uh, job. And I was, I had surgery once and I had that person there and they were just top notch. It was wonderful. Great experience. Since his spirit guided push into the world of metaphysics and spiritualism back in 2007, he has undergone a total transformation in body, mind, and spirit. My gosh, I can't wait to hear everything. He studies, trains, and experiences uh, with all types of healing and mediumship as well in various countries and has helped him develop his own style of evidential uh, message delivery. That's interesting. That is truly from his heart. His studies and trainings received at, this is great, United Metaphysical Churches in Roanoke, Virginia, at the author Finlay, College of Spiritualism and Psychic Sciences in England and the Inner Spiritual Center in Fairfield, New Jersey are his three most celebrated places of learning that have helped him achieve the spiritual rich richness demonstrated through all stands for today. That's amazing. That's a lot of education. He is now a certified spiritual medium who often raises money for churches, nonprofits, charities through his public demonstrations of mediumship, public speaking, and mystical research presentations. Oh, my gosh. This is an interesting man. His love of all things religiously mystical and paranormal have fueled his passion for precipitation, mediumship, and the preservation of the rich yet rare history of such spirit writings and images. His current precipitation research, guided strongly by a spirit team, has led him to begin work towards a literary piece editors are now calling significant for our history. That's amazing. Wow. Let's bring him in. I can't wait to hear everything he has to tell us. All right. And he's coming in. There we go. Hi, hey. good evening. Hi. Hey, Hi, Kevin. Reverend Lee. Great to see you, Miss Debbie and Mr. Andy. Well, nice we to just, see you. Uh, is, uh, you just don't know. It's an honor to have you here. We're so excited. Thank you, guys. And we've talked, you know, for uh, quite a, like a month 
telling telling everyone that you were going to be here. Now, I just told everyone your introduction and all this mm -hmm. great education and experiences uh, that you have uh, gone through. And so mm -hmm. we'd really love you to tell in your words a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, basically, let me take this off. Hold on. Maybe this will help. Okay. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm getting a little bit of feedback, but I'll work with it. And uh, so I started back in 2008, and I traveled over to the Arthur Findlay College in England. And at that time, I was beginning my mediumship development, and I had never seen really professionalism in mediumship to that level. And as I went through the, a, dip, a few different programs there, I actually noticed that uh, I, I just had a natural tendency for bringing through information. And when I went, I didn't believe that I had the potential, but because I noticed that other people were developing, I was hoping that I had potential. So that's really where some of the mental changes in me uh, took place over uh, a short period of time. Sorry about that. The feedback is really giving me a... Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. let's do this. I'm going to change this up so I don't have to hear myself. Bear with me. Okay. Okay, oh, let's work nice. with that. All right, sorry. Now, so after I uh, went to Arthur Findlay College probably four times in four years, and I studied trance healing, I studied uh, healing energies, healing diff various different healing modalities that they taught, and then I also worked with the physical aspects of mediumship as well as the mental. Uh, it, I really left with a very grounded sense of what was possible and what I wanted to focus on. So I really decided to step forward with my mental mediumship and push forward with that. And when I came back to the United States, I entered into the United Metaphysical Church's seminary program just for the educational aspects of it. And then I noticed that there were a lot of students also working on their mediumship and they had a mediumship development program that was a three year long program. So I enrolled in that and began working, demonstrating in churches and all of our churches uh, when I would travel. So we have a, probably 16 churches from Michigan down to Florida. So I had plenty of places to serve. And uh, even in my own church, uh, there were plenty of opportunities to uh, serve during the church service or an evening galas, things like that. And then once I completed that program at the, well, what we call Mother Church, the United Metaphysical Churches, I went on to another program that a medium I admired named Bill Collar had set up with another lady, Sharon Subas, in Fairfield, New Jersey. And that was at Inner Spiritual Center there. And it was a two-year program that trained you. Initially, it was an international training program where we would work with different people from different countries through Skype and through different uh, conferencing type videos. And then we had the opportunity of traveling to those countries to demonstrate in their churches. But by the end of the program, we realized that it, it, uh, it, we just weren't able to get it set up. So, we, But we still finished the development work. And that program took all of uh, everything that I learned to a whole nother level. Because uh, Bill Collar and Sharon taught us such detailed information on how to make connection how to do whatever we were trying to do intuitively or mediumistically uh, in a much more refined way, uh, you know, when we're working with the public or when we're working privately in our own business. So those three programs uh, were really outstanding and I always refer people to them. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Andy, do you want to, you have some questions for him? I do. Um, so Kevin, how did you first learn about this rare ability called precipitation mediumship? Mm -hmm. Sure. Bear with me. All right. Okay. So back at uh, around, it was around Christmas time of 2007. I had just been with my church 
for about six months. And it's interesting because the minister of my church had asked me to begin public speaking at the church to help out more and to write a sermon. And I at first was very much turned off by that because I, I did not see myself as someone who had the authority to stand and deliver any type of religious uh, message or product. And uh, she had hinted she would love for me to become a minister, which really turned me off because, again, sure. I just didn't feel that I had what it took to be a minister. I didn't feel I was uh, worthy enough, holy enough. Whatever, I, I did not believe in myself. But it was interesting that she encouraged me to write this sermon at Christmas. And, and uh, the way it all began was this. She wanted me to speak on the metaphysical interpretation of the birth of Jesus at Christmas time. I knew the Christian story because I grew up Southern Baptist, but I knew nothing about metaphysics. Again, I was six months new into all of this. And uh, so she handed me a stack of very old books. I consumed those books in two weeks and wrote this sermon, and I turned it in on a Friday night to her. And then the next day, she had already prepped me, and she wanted me to experience my first seance. So she said, go see, go to the seance tomorrow and enjoy yourself. And that seance happened to be a card writing seance. Same. So that was my very first introduction to the world of spirit in a very profound way. I went to this seance. The medium was Reverend Hoyt Robinette. And there were probably 25 people in the room. It was held during daylight. They just uh, dimmed the lights a little bit. And the medium began the session and delivered messages to random people from their loved ones, from the spirit guides that worked with them. And when he came to me, he actually called out my name. And he said, I need to come, call, I need to, come to someone named Kevin. And I thought, well, you probably saw my name on the list. But his eyes were, uh, he was sitting in a chair, his eyes were closed. But he still had, I know now, he heard clairaudiently to come to me. And then he brought through my grandmother's name. He described her perfectly. And he also identified her as th that she was a dairy farmer and that she lived near a railroad track, which was very true. And uh, he also identified that she had no knowledge of mediumship or the type of church that I was in. She never would have understood what this type of church was. So I thought that was very interesting. But she did say she liked my church. So that's a very important point, And I'll come back to that. And then the next message he came through, he said, now I'm not being silly because it's Christmas, but you have Mother Mary and Father Joseph energy all around you right now. And they tell me that you're working on a project. Uh, they are working with you on a project right now that's very important. And I thought, how in the world does this man know that? And so he's, he listened to spirit for a little bit longer and he came back and he said, they're telling me that like the church you have found, if you will stay there, you don't have to, you have free will, you can leave. But if you stay, you will change the lives of thousands of people. It's up to you. And I thought, what is, what is he talking about? What, how can I do anything for that many people? And it didn't really make sense. And then when he, he basically brought through that Mother Mary and Father Joseph were very proud of the work that I had begun to do at my church the, to help save my church, I realized I was not being judged by these spirits and I was not being judged by my family member in spirit. I was being supported and loved. And so I found a bit of healing in my mind and my spirit especially. And when the, the event ended, as we opened the precipitation basket that the medium had in front of us the whole time, a card came out for me that was a picture of Mother Mary and Father Joseph in a very Renaissance style painting. And I was shocked. And on the other side of the card was the name of my grandmother and a few spirit guides that I had not met yet. So that began my journey. And when I went home that evening, I, I will tell you, I sat on the bed. I did cry. I was uh, shell-shocked. I, I didn't know what had just happened. I didn't know what this, this phenomena was called. But what I did realize was he had taken away the fear that was inside of me because what I didn't mention was... Probably within days, if not weeks, I was about to leave my church because I had still that I'm just going to call it a washing of Christianity in my mind. I had grown up with it. I couldn't get away from it. And I was tormented between is the devil uh, misleading me? Is Satan misleading me somehow? Am I, am I being sinful by nature? 
I really want a relationship with God in the spirit world, and I don't want to screw this up. So I was in a huge turmoil mentally and spiritually probably for a couple of months. And that evening, I realized the turmoil and the torment that I had created for myself was gone because of this phenomena. And as I sat there crying, I decided, I don't know what the heck this old man just did, but whatever this is, that's exactly what I want to do for uh, people in my career. And I'm going to figure this out. And that literally began the journey of why I'm on this radio show today. Wow. That's amazing. That's awesome. Amazing. <laughs> um, Kevin, how many people are there who can demonstrate this today? I probably know one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, probably five, four in the United States. One is in England. And uh, if we talk, Let's talk spirit card writing first. Uh, in, regard, in regards to spirit card writing, which are some of the images that we'll probably put up at some point and show people, uh, these are little three by five index cards. They've been around. They've been. These are what mediums have used for probably fifty plus years. And in these cards, on these cards, spirit will write or precipitate images, pictures, symbols, things like that, and poetry, all types of things. And so with, with these index cards, yes, just like that, that's actually the front of a card. We call that spirit card writing. And so that's, that justifies the front. And on the back is what we call the bonus side. And yes, there we go. That is the most beautiful side, of course. Everybody loves this side. It's actually the back of the card. And this was, spirit is always told by the medium uh, that they can artistically present whatever they wish to present on the card. So that's what my mentors have told me, that they told Spirit to do. And it's truly amazing the detail that come through these cards. Most people do not believe me when I share it with them, and they believe it's been Xeroxed or it's been hand-drawn or it's somehow been scanned and reproduced, and it's not. I, I have been to, I don't know, probably over 20 easily of these apport seances, of the, I'm sorry, precipitation seances, and I have seen these cards be produced, and I've actually seen them produced in front of my eyes. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, I would say there are four mediums that produce these cards in the United States. One of them is probably entering a state of retirement, probably a second one within the next few years. A couple of the others uh, stay very much off the radar so that they're not obligated to demonstrate publicly. But they're my mentors. And then there's a lady in England, I, I don't want to forget her, a dear friend, Sandy Ingham. She's a spirit artist. She'll draw your loved ones, and she is capable of drawing your spirit guides. And she works with black charcoal, drawing your loved one while entranced. And what we've noticed is over the last probably two-year time period, I met her three years ago, probably two and a half years, let's say, she's begun to get precipitated color on these black and white drawings that people take out of the building or take out of the churches take home with them so it's precipitating onto very lightly but in the cheeks or in the hair or the eye color it's precipitating for her and very recently she was painting i'm not sure if it was acrylic or oil but two children's faces began to form after the painting was starting to dry wow that's amazing yeah. Yep. I mean, this must blow people's minds because it does. this is just fantastic. Now, I I grew up, Kevin, in a spiritualist church. And oh, you're so, so lucky. Oh, you're so lucky. <laughs> my great aunt was wow. a cook there, and then my mother took over the cafe. So there was a lot of materializing things, but never wow. anything like this. And we had photographs that pictures uh, mm -hmm. of people came in and out developed mm -hmm. on paper but this is just amazing but i'm also sure you probably had spirit writing that uh that spirit precipitated and you don't know where the uh, pigment was from right well i i never was in on that and mm -hmm. um and i'm not sure everything they did i was kind of young at the time sure but it it was just amazing the things that would materialize wow. or were tangible. And this mm -hmm. is that first picture is blows my mind. And so I'm very, yes, I'm very open to all of this only because 
of my experience that I've already had. So to other people, they must be just going, oh my goodness, I can't wrap my Absolutely. head around this. Can I ask you like, um, yes. how many times have you actually seen this done? Probably, I would say I've seen this over 20 times. Uh, exactly, it's somewhere around 20 to 25 times because I was thinking before I got on this call, actually, how how many times have I been to these types of gatherings and then I thought, let me go count my cards. But I've also I've seen I've been to these experiences where I didn't receive a card because sometimes, due to various reasons, it could be the physical health of the medium. Maybe they're mentally exhausted, physically dealing with something, uh, or there maybe the medium was young and they could not produce but a handful of cards where there may be 15 or 25 people in the room. So I didn't always get one, but I got to run around and take pictures for my collection and uh, ask qu lots of questions. So that was good enough for me. Uh, and I do want to say, I don't think I mentioned it earlier. You mentioned you grew up in a spiritualist church, and, and I'm incredibly jealous. <laughs> our church our church system and our founder, Reverend F. Reed Brown, is a precipitation medium. He uh, continues to produce cards occasionally. He doesn't demonstrate it very often. He used to do it a lot more when he was younger. And uh, he was born into a spiritualist family. So he founded back, I would say, in the late 1960s or mid-1960s, he founded a whole church system that had its own seminary, healing development program, mediumship development program, educational program. And uh, he basically renamed, he had to come up with a name for the organization. So he called it Divine, uh, the United Metaphysical Churches, the Religion of divine metaphysics. So it separated us from the spiritualist uh, because we were teaching principles of reincarnation and that was not very kosher at the time. So he wanted his own system where he could control the churches, the ministerial process, the, the mediums, the healers, all of that. And he, he's done a wonderful job. So I uh, just wanted to let you know that um, if you come to my church or our churches throughout the country, you will literally feel you have stepped into a spiritualist church because we run them almost identical. Our principles are the same, maybe a couple of more here and there, but everything you hear from the platform and uh, all the demonstrations of healing and mediumship, it's, it's uh, totally spiritualism. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. It's If you guys, if the audience has never attended, um, seek one out. I, I mm -hmm. hadn't gone for such a long time and I made a meetup and we went down to San Diego and mm -hmm. I don't, I'm, I'm a psychic. I don't have anybody read me. And mm -hmm. there I am sitting, bringing all my people in so they could get a reading and, and a healing. And I was blown away by um, the Reverend uh, sing singling me out and telling me mm -hmm. absolutely all this stuff, everything. And I just stood up and I said, I'm giving you validation. This is amazing. But it's so wonderful to go and get that healing. And you're, you're, a, what a wonderful job you have as the um, anesthesia nurse. And I they're wonderful. Uh, oh my I goodness. I did have some, uh, some uh, one that took me through a very difficult difficult surgery that turned into something that was going mm -hmm. to be very short time two hours wow. and he was sure. fabulous I'll, I always yeah. give it up to how wonderful that career is and it and is. then to be in the healing as far as um, in metaphysical healing is wonderful also but let's get back to this what's sure. the most unusual and interesting experience that you've had with this phenomena because mm -hmm. I'm so excited to know more Okay, uh, I will tell you, I did not get to witness this, but I'll, what I will tell you is one of my mentors, who is a pre precipitation medium in our church system, he was telling us, the one of, I would say probably, must have been about 15 years ago, he said, and uh, they wanted to do an experiment during a seance, and so they removed all of the crayons and the colored pencils and the, the ballpoint pens and the little brick of charcoal, and uh, they wanted to try to see what flowers would do. So somebody went and brought purple irises and shoved them into the basket or the box that the medium was using. And, and with the cards, after everybody magnetized the cards, closed the lid, they began to own, they did all their prayers. Then, then he delivered messages for probably 
30, 45 minutes. And then when his guides told him that uh, everything was done, they opened the lid and he stuck his hand in the container and he thought, what, what's going on? And he pulled the flowers out and the flowers were solid white. Oh, and wow. Solid white. They had taken the pigment from the from the flower petals, and now they also took, unfortunately, all the cellulose. Cellulose is a very sticky resin. It's almost, it literally, it's probably like the ectoplasm of plants. Mm -hmm. They took the substance that held the pigment out of the plant, and it because it was whipped around and laid by the spiritual energies inside the container, that whole container, it was total disaster. It was covered in the sticky resin that ruined the container, and the cards were a hot mess. <laughs> the images were uh, pretty recognizable, but uh, there was still stuff was smeared, and the pigment didn't really lay properly because it wasn't their normal. They were they were used to crayons and colored pens and maybe some charcoal and wow. ballpoint pen, and they had never used this before uh, through the medium. So it really turned into a disaster. And the medium was uh, not so happy, threw his container away, got, got a new container, and uh, everybody had a good laugh. But that was pretty interesting. Now, uh, I had mentioned our founder, Reverend Brown. He held, it must have been, I'm going to say four, probably four years ago, he held a, a weekend that was a precipitation and card writing and a physical mediumship development weekend. So we talked about all aspects of physical mediumship, but we really focused on uh, precipitation and card writing. So he used to, as a young man, hold red light card writing precipitation seances. So he would have a little lamp that would uh, emit a red light, and it was on a rheostat, like a dimmer. And everybody would take these stacks of cards, these blank white index cards, and they would all hold them. They'd magnetize them. They'd own. They'd pray. And then they would place them on the table in the middle of the room where the red light could touch them. And the light was turned way, way down low, almost off. He would intuitively or mediumistically sense what spirit wanted them to do. So they would continue alming. They would sing different songs. He might give some messages if spirit came around. And over the course of probably 30 minutes, not long, uh, ever so often, often he would get the inclination to turn up the rheostat very slightly. So the cards would literally begin to develop because of the red light. So at some point, they, he said, let's turn it up a little more. And we were watching this evening. We were looking at the cards. We could hardly see them. They were so faint. And the light got just enough bright to where we could see the little faint line of the edge of every card. But we couldn't really make out the cards individually. But we could see a tiny bit of something. Their cards were still blank. And as he said, Spirit's telling me now's the time. I want three big ohms, and we're going to turn the light up slightly a little heavier. And as we did that, I'm not kidding you. You could see multiple images phase right into those cards, and they were all laying on each other like, uh, what is it? Like, like you fanned the cards. That's how we had placed them. And you could see different images under every card partially in that red light. And we howled and screamed it was the most amazing thing i've ever seen oh I've only my seen gosh. once i've only seen oh it once gosh. that was this amazing is, this is really crazy <laughs> but in my house kevin things fly uh -huh. all kinds of paranormal uh -huh. stuff happens i want to come to your house <laughs> i know well i also have a um you know, investi investigative team and a, mm -hmm. a, a team of mediums so we do look at my house a lot um I'm so excited that I really want to do this. <laughs> you should. Anybody can do it. Now, how long has this been around? Well, I can tell you from my research, a lot of people think that it's only gone back about uh, almost 200 years. But a friend of mine, uh, I'm going to I'll give a shout out to him. Hopefully he's watching uh, or will be watching Reverend Sidney Schwartz uh, from up north. And Reverend Sidney, my buddy, he found an old book from the uh, that was written about the 1500s with, uh, oh gosh, 
what's his name? Martin Luther, Martin Luther, that's his name. He's the gentleman that basically created the divide for Protestantism and Catholicism, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, one of his family, he had a, uh, two daughters and a wife. And a, his wife died, and they would always sit in the parlor by the uh, fireplace, and a light began to come into the room. And as the light came into the room, one of the daughters went into a deep trance, while the other one stayed awake. And then pretty soon, probably several months later, uh, they noticed that writings and pictures began to appear in one of the journals in the room. And it was because of the mother. So there's actually in this book that I was uh, given for my research, there were images, uh, I guess you call them facsimiles or uh, uh, examples. They weren't hand drawn, but these were images that were added into the book. And the book was probably a hundred, little over a hundred years old. But uh, that I thought was the oldest. But as I continued to do research, I noticed that in biblical research, in my biblical research of the Bible, that there's actually three perfect examples of precipitation and spirit writing. And uh, that kind of blew my mind when I started realizing that. And I thought, well, I wonder how much further it goes back. I don't know how much further beyond that it goes, but I definitely have my biblical examples uh, that I've discovered. So that's interesting. How long or how do does Andy and I learn to do this? I mean, how many decades do I have to go through? Oh, in well, it's funny. So you, well, see, you must be a psychic because you literally know the answer already. Uh, it's funny you say that because uh, my one, two, three, I would say three of my mentors, it took them 15 to 17 years to where they could sit with their sacred container, say their, their precipitation basket or maybe a shoebox, a small container. Uh, with all the coloring instruments and cards, and they would sit with people or uh, friends, and they could produce every time they sat. But it took 15 to 17 years of almost daily dedicated sitting. I'm not joking. Wow. wow. I'm okay, not joking. You're, no. you're not dashing give, my dreams. I'm going to do this. <laughs> I, I, you know, and I will tell you, I this is just my thought. We are in the age of Aquarius. We have left the age of Pisces, right? So the age of Aquarius has to do with a quickening of the planet. The planet has become more spiritualized. And so I personally believe that we are seeing the result of that on television, on radio, on the internet, like we're doing now. There are these venues where people can talk about all things paranormal, alien, fairies, uh, cyclops, Bigfoot, all kinds of strange things, and it's becoming more normalized. So I truly do believe that it's not just uh, talk about the age of Aquarius. We're seeing it in the people. We're seeing mediums on TV doing demonstrations or healers, heal the, that, like the Australian healer that was on TV last year, Charlie. I forgot the name of the show. An incredible healer. demonstration of healing in front of the camera. It blew, it blew my mind to watch that. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot of things like that, and... Um, it, it just blows my mind. I, I think we're, we're literally becoming a much more spiritual planet. And let me tell you this. I'll give everybody a little bit of hope. Because 15 to 17 years, I was willing to bank and invest on that. I'm about, mm, let's say, probably eight years into my development. Uh, I have a ways to go, and that's okay. Divine timing. But a dear friend of mine who uh, is, is, as far as I know, the youngest precipitation medium that can do this uh, at any sitting he does is uh, he's about 31 years old, and uh, it took him six and a half years to develop, and his gift came forward in about mid-2012, right before I was ordained the next year. So it goes to show anything is possible, and he developed in six and a half years where all of his mentors, which were really the same people I know, they took 15, 17 years. So I think there's something to the age of Aquarius and the, the spiritualizing of the people and the planet. I, there's got to be a connection. I, I just believe it is. Kevin, did everybody start out as a developed medium? Did they come with a natural mm -hmm. psychic ability or and then go into this? Or can you just anybody, any of our viewers go and, and learn this? 
Well, I'll tell you this. Everybody's got psychic potential, right? Everybody even has mediumistic potential. Psychic potential means you and I can sense the energies of each other. I can sense the energy in your auric field. I can sense the energy from my soul to your soul. If I, if I choose to work as a medium, I am connecting my mind to spirit mind. And so that is connecting with spirit personalities, right? So everybody has different potentials. And, and whether you work as a healer or a psychic or as a medium, everyone has varying potentials. Even if you're a, let's say, a pianist, okay? Some children are born virtuosos. Some children are born, uh, you can barely train them and they take off. There are children that you really have to put in a lot of effort with, but they catch on and they do really well and they can play weddings or parties or things like that. Then there are other children that you pour yourself into and those children eh, barely produce, don't want to produce. They're just not really interested. And there are some children that maybe for health reasons or mental reasons, they're not capable. Okay. And so I would say it's a very same with being a psychic or healer or a medium in the sense that we all have varying potentials. I have found over probably the last nine years, let's see, what is this, nine years? Nine years since I've learned about this, that if you have, if you get excited and your soul starts burning for this and you're, you just are like a kid in a candy shop and you, you want to read everything about it and you want to go get you a, a, a shoebox or a sacred snake charmer's basket or something and uh, you want to throw some crayons and some cards in, I guarantee you're going to produce because you are attached to your heart chakra in that moment. And it's the people who are passionate that will produce it. If you're interested and you want to give it a go, no, you're not going to produce it most likely. You'll give up. And I've seen that. A lot of people uh, will come to my lectures. They get excited. And within a couple of months, I check in. They're like, no, I think I'm going to focus elsewhere. I, and right. I said, I, I, I did say it would take possibly 15 years. It, it's going to take a while. You know, you don't just get it because you take a week. You took a weekend course. I think we in America and I've seen it in England, too, and overseas. Uh, unfortunately, in metaphysics, I'll just use that as a broad term or spiritualism. Uh, there's a lot of inappropriateness with uh, one day, two day mediumship certification. Uh, yes, yes, seminars. yes, yes. And uh, <laughs> That is uh, uh, grossly unacceptable to me. I don't agree with that. I've put in my time. I've sat in development circles for 10 years. I'm in two different ones right now. And uh, you, got, you, you must always be learning and developing. And, it, and the minute you say, I know it all, I don't need to do anymore, uh, I hope nobody comes to your events because right. you're not going to be doing them any service. Your vibration is already dropping. Uh, right. So I – yeah. So I – I believe uh, very wholeheartedly in pouring myself into this is my this is really my nursing. This is an extension of my nursing. I am giving of my heart and my spirit and my mind and my body and my money. I I've spent as you can tell from what you read in the very beginning. I I've, I've spent a lot of money and time and invested a lot in myself not only in my my nurse anesthesia career and my registered nursing career but also to become the best medium I can be because I want to change people's lives, and and uh, I, I have to do it. It's just me. I can't I can't uh, do it halfway. I've got to do it 100%. So that's why I work so hard to do what I do. Well, we can tell that your passion is there. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I I know that Andy and I. That's our our mission too, is to make sure that we help. And if anybody comes in crisis we wow. always embrace them and do what we can wow um, that's what it's about thank you right and going back to this thing where i'm saying yes 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 is so many mm -hmm. times i see people go for a weekend i teach a lot of things one is tarot and mm -hmm. they actually go for you know a day or a weekend and I'm like, you're coming to my class, you're going to pencil in some weeks, you know. And yeah, it's just amazing that um, that happens. And then they lose interest, of course. They do. And so you do have to have the passion for it. But I want to tell all our viewers that my personal experience was to grow up and know know things that was just like a natural thing i didn't think it was any different to kind of know wow. what people should do or i i felt a force field 
But sure. throughout your life, you are, this is a gift from God. And thank you, God. Mm -hmm. I say it all the time during the day, thanking God for this. But let me tell you, you go through things in age times and you're downloading more stuff. I feel like God has given me the gift more. And one way I always tell people don't do not do what I did is a near-death experience. It really came in. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I got so close that I think that mm -hmm. something came into me and all of a yep. sudden I was hearing it all. And wow. then later on, I hit an age milestone. And, and then there were the spirits I longed to see and um, mm -hmm. describing who they are. So... Working with this and working towards it and going to psychic development classes and mediumship classes and practicing mm -hmm. is something if you really want to do this that you need to be involved in. And God yes. will bring you what you yep. need, the people That's to true. network with, the perfect class, yep. and you'll find Absolutely. your calling and your passion. And we can Absolutely. see that that Kevin has found his passion in healing in in so many ways. Now, um, I know we need to ask a couple of questions, but sure, I, I do want to ask you, so do you do energy healing? I do to a small degree. I have a small clientele that I work with locally, and uh, it's strictly private. I don't uh, advertise it too much, but uh, I do have an ongoing healing prayer, uh, like a basket that I keep on my altar at home. In a, in a special place. And when people who come through my my church or uh, reach out to me locally on Facebook or something, I usually will throw their name in the basket and and uh, spend time once a week at a specific time to do distant healing. And, and you know, it's interesting. I, I'll mention this because it came up last week. Someone said, ah, that distant healing stuff, you know, you psychics, you guys ask for five or $20. And how do we know you're really praying for us? And I said, well, you really probably don't, but do you know my character? Am I, do I give of myself 100% to my church? Do I give of myself to my community? Am I, do I do charity events? I'm probably the type of person who will keep up uh, what I post on my, uh, let's say my website, my calendar. I don't want the karma. I wouldn't, I would not want the karma of taking people's donations uh, or their love offerings for uh, prayer work, healing work, uh, things like that. No. I'm very karma driven. Um, so I, but, you know. I actually have a great big jar. And when I have a meetup um, or in emails, because I do readings for people all over the world, Whoa. they'll ask for healing and I send healing energy. Yeah. And I also, and I, I don't have time to tell you all the stories, but sure. it works, guys. The energy it healing does, works. It does work. It yes. really does. Yeah. And I put them in. And then whenever I have, um, a yogi or a healer or somebody come into my house, they wow. all always know to go over and put their energy in for um, everybody mm. that's in it. And, wow, um, I love that idea. Isn't it? So when you said you have a basket, I go, yep, that, that works. <laughs> but you did yeah. have something that I'm intrigued with. In, sure. And I don't know if it's the bank or the Bang sisters. Oh, yes. Who are they? Could, could you tell oh, us? Oh, because I'm sure. like, who are they? <gasps> sure, sure, sure. Uh, the Banks sisters were a couple of ladies, young ladies, back in the, uh, I'd say probably mid-1800s, who began demonstrating publicly together. So they were, you know, uh, sisters. And so it was a nice way for two ladies to travel together safely, uh, because at that time, women typically didn't travel alone. Uh, and they certainly didn't travel with men that they were not married to. So this was a nice way for them to work in tandem, churches, public events. They could generate income for themselves uh, along the way as well. And what they noticed, uh, they were very physically, physical mediumship oriented, I'll say. Uh, their mental mediumship was outstanding, I heard. And they started noticing, they began with what is called slate writing. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Okay, slates. Remember when we were children uh, and oh, yeah. we had those little chalkboards that we played with and they were probably plastic around the edge, but they had a, a strange piece of like uh, charcoal -y slate in the middle that's black. Oh, yeah, and you write on it. Okay, and you can write on it and then wipe it off. Well, basically before we had, paper was very expensive in the 1800s, but back then they had slate, slate boards. And so they had chalk. Those were very inexpensive. And they actually were real slate, real rock. 
And uh, so back then what they would do is they would place a couple of these slates face to face, meaning the side you ride on, and they put a tiny piece of chalk or two in between and then they would tie it with a rope and they'd either hold it between themselves or they'd, it'd be in one of their laps while they gave a demonstration. And by the end of the demonstration, they would open the slates and there would be writings and images, right? And so that be, really began their precipitation because that chalk was precipitated. Uh, it, was, it was apported from the chalk itself into spirit through thought control. Their spirit guides reformed it into what they wanted on the slate and then rematerialized it back onto the slate in this dimension. That's how they do it. So they mm -hmm. take the pigment out of this dimension, work with it mentally, and lay it down back into our dimension on the, let's say, canvas, whatever the, 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 the foundation is they're putting it on. Oh, wow. And so that began. And then as they went along, they began to think, well, could we use canvas? Could we use material? Could What kind of uh, paper or, or cardboard uh, could we use? So it, it all it began to advance from there. And eventually they, they started doing uh, uh, framed canvases. They'd put them face to face, canvas to canvas, and they would stick them in windows where sunlight would pour through both of the canvases into a darkened room. And they would each place one hand on uh, the opposite edge of or the, actually the edge closest to that medium or that sister. And they would touch it and they would hold it while they did a demonstration. And the guest reported that, and actually there's uh, some nice articles written up about it. They said it was as though smoke began to appear and move inside these canvases and it would swirl around building a bodily form. And then you could start seeing color building in that, in that uh, very... Uh, hazy image because it literally was building between two canvases but the sunlight uh, could show you what was taking place and at the very end they noticed the the eyes always came in last but when they would pull those canvases apart one canvas had absolutely nothing on it it was not affected but the other canvas would be covered in uh, full body portraits partial portraits landscapes things like that and uh, that began their sun paintings and then it advanced to them using a type of paper. I don't know exactly what it was, but probably uh, the really early stages of paper that would produce uh, pictures and, and photographic stuff on. And uh, well, I'm not saying it's photographic paper, but it was definitely basic paper. And uh, that paper, what they would do is that uh, they would place uh, pots of paint or something like that under the canvas and they would touch the blank canvas that faced the audience and then the image would literally begin to appear the very same way as it did through the window, which was uh, like a, a field of smoke almost on the canvas that moved around almost snake-like, if I can say that. It, was, it had an intelligence. It was being controlled. The body would form. The head would form. The hair would form. Jewelry would form. Mm -hmm. Clothing would form. And then the face would form. And the last thing that would appear would typically be closed eyes sometimes. And even sometimes then, if they appeared closed, they would instantly snap to being open, and then that meant the, the painting was done. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Crazy. You know, Kevin, yeah. my girlfriend and I took a picture of her, and we put oh. it in the Bible. I got to find out where in the Bible we put it. Mm -hmm. um, and she called me. It was a Polaroid. So it, you know, it was photo photographic uh, mm -hmm. paper. And mm -hmm. she called me, and we looked at it once in a while, and we did take it out, and we color was in it and all kinds of stuff. But mm -hmm. I looked at her, and I go, you don't have long hair, and you never had long hair. And wow. the picture, she had grown a full head of hair going down okay. her arm, and we just wow. could not believe it. I said, and you do look at least 15 years younger. Wow. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> We we look wow. at that picture once in a while. The hair is still long, just to see. And I've got That's to funny. I've got to ask her to take it out. But at the spiritualist church, we would take a photograph of someone. They would put it in in a spe special thing, and I don't know what verse it was in the Bible. And they would get it out afterwards, you know, a day or whatever. And you just there would be faces. Faces and all kinds of wow. things, and it continues to change. I, that's called time. scatography. I love scatography. Oh, see, 
I'm so excited over this. I totally am ready to. Uh, well, I'm somebody who jumps in and tries anything, and I'm not afraid to do it. And wow. um, I'm just like, this would be just so amazing. Andy, you would you want to do it? Oh, oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, definitely. It's just like, definitely. and well, and Kevin, do people, what do they get from this? Do they interpret this as a message that's drawn or? Absolutely. It's a, the, you know, in my opinion, I, it's just so incredibly healing. Everything we do as ministers, mediums, healers, uh, servants in our spiritualist churches, everything that we do is healing in its most basic element. Because if everything is love, what we're doing is we're sharing love. This work that the mediums demonstrate, this uh let's say communication from spirit, it's another expression of love. It is them letting us know evidentially, it's highly evidential. The stuff that is in my presentations uh, is even way beyond what I've even shared with you. It's unbelievable, but uh, they literally want us to know everything you grew up hearing. We are not dead. We are alive. We are with you. We support you. We guide you. We are here to heal you. We send you prayers. It's all of that. And I would say that this phenomena is it, it, it literally creates the space that transforms everybody's lives into just a higher vibration of truth because a lot of these people come into this not knowing what the heck it is. And when they leave, and I was one of those, I'll admit it, I'm still a skeptic. I thought this is the greatest magic trick or this stuff is real because I, I don't understand what I just experienced. Yeah. And it is so mind blowing and it's such a change in your sense of reality that uh, you either love it or you really don't like it and you don't want to come back. And uh, I don't find people in the middle of the road. If I do, maybe it's military people or cops or something, but uh, I would just say it, 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 it changes lives. And the purpose of it is to, is to uplift you and heal you. And that's why spirit does this for us. Oh, that's wonderful. What a wonderful message. And mm -hmm. can I ask the pictures that you, mm -hmm. uh, that we showed, were those ones that you actually saw and took pictures of? Yes. Yes. These are all ones that I'm just looking real quick to make sure I have. Oh, let me move something real I quick. Mean, that, the oh, one yes, that, that one. Which, yeah, I took a picture amazing. of that one. And this was from a friend of mine has this card. And this was at one event. So I ran around snapping images. And it just goes to show... Uh, uh, different layers in the card. I can, you can't tell there, but all of that color, that red, the yellow, the orange, that is a layer of crayon and it's very waxy. But when you go below it to where the body is, uh, which is where you can touch the lower part of the card, it, it just feels like a card that somehow has pigment embedded in it, but you can't really feel the pigment, but it's still there. So it's almost like multiple layers on the card. And Spirit said, yes, there's another example. Spirit literally says they lay the pigments down in layers. And uh, the reason, and I know that what they're saying is true, is because when we get to the point where you see all the names in that writing, you will see these very strange lines. Uh, that blue one's my favorite. That's my joy guide. That's lilac. That is so wonderful. Beautiful, but stunning. Hey, well, they but have we talent. <laughs> It's amazing. So when we get to the one that has spirit writing and it shows those names, there it is. Do you see those little uh, horizontal and vertical marks, those lines? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's the edge of the ectoplasm laying down the pigment. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep, those are, so it literally rips around. It's roaring inside the uh, sacred container or the box, and it actually is laying down, uh, rematerializing the pigment, and that is just kind of the sloppy edge of the phenomena where it leaves a mark on the paper. Okay, so that's you know, what that is. So I see lilac on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin, yes. I was in a hotel room and I had two sisters with me, and two were gambling because mm -hmm. it was a casino. Fine. And when I went to sleep in one bed because I'm the baby and I got I always get what I want. Uh -huh. And my other two sisters were in another bed. And in the my other sisters came knocking in the morning. And mm -hmm. my sister got up, turned the light on. And they came in and they all turned and looked at me. And they just were just like their jaw dropped. And embedded in the wallpaper above my head 
was old, old scripts. You have to go back to, I don't know how wow. long. This old, beautiful, uh, and it was in English, this wow. big D, flowing E, B, O, uh, up to the R, and then a flowing G, which was my wow. maiden name initial. And um, it was like wow. it was pressed in. And they were like all up crazy. And I said, oh, are we going to have to pay for that? But oh, no. in what I'm seeing in yours, you have more modern type of writing. But mm -hmm. mine was a like old, old English mm -hmm. style. So yeah, it, it wouldn't surprise me if this that? wasn't one of your guys. Oh, that was crazy. Yeah. That was, I mean, but that's my life. Me. That's my whole life, guys. Yeah. I forgot about <laughs> that, that until you tell us look at the writing and I go, Oh, oh, I remember seeing writing. Um, wow. and I don't know how it got pressed into the to the paper, but I said, pack yep. up, let's get out of here before they wow. see what happened. Wow. But but when you get this modern drawing, do you think that you're getting a guy that's more, or do you think that these people no. actually lived before in a certain time yes. period? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So. so basically the phenomena is taking place because our spirit guide, your precipitation guide in particular, you may have one or two of them, but they've had a life on earth and they're humanized and that's why they're one of our guides. So uh, the writing is interesting because the writing can be very basic. It could be childlike. It could be very advanced. It could be very old, like apparently your guide had written in a type of script, and that's yeah. your signature. And I can look at cards now that people bring me, and I, I know exactly who produced them, and I generally know what year they were produced because I've, I have so many of these, and I've documented when they, at what phase of development was that medium in what year, and so what I can show you is in that writing there, well, no, it's not on that card, but I have some cards where a very famous medium at my church system, who is a physical medium, we have her signature in our museum on several things. Things, And on some of my cards that I've received, the exact cursive handwriting signature appears on my cards that, that is, exists in the museum of her. Oh, my gosh. So, Yep. So they can bring through their script. They can bring through their titles and their love of all their titles, Dr. So-and-so, the third, junior, whatever. They will put those things in there. They actually tease me. And I, uh, my name, uh, Reverend Kevin Lee, is really my first and my middle name. I don't typically use my last family name. And, uh, but it's funny because I've received cards where they'll, they will place three dots behind Kevin Lee to tease me as though they know my last name, but they won't write oh. it. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Well, you know what? Even though you try to be a little anonymous, I yes. have another name and my team went out to Colorado and they were um, going around a mausoleum and the the last picture I look and I go, are you kidding me? There is oh. the, my stage name and there is my real name on oh the dead God. people's coffins. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you have a place you can go now. I go, well, I think they're calling me to go to go to that. Uh, oh, was it Chesman, Chesman Cemetery in Colorado? Wow. Somebody's a calling, I'll tell you. And, and they do call me, uh, people go out to some of the memorial parks and where um, uh, the one girl was killed to hear um, and their ovulus will, will say, Debbie, 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 yeah. Debbie. They say, hey, they want to know where you're at. I so love it. you guys are to the viewers. And uh -huh. the one thing is when this comes out, we instantly get about a hundred views and then it builds and builds. So wow. the people be watching this and this stuff is real. And I know that yeah. on our shows, I try to tell you that, yes, the cracker box shakes and waves at me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that things fly and they do all kinds of things or they wake me up when the alarm doesn't come off very nicely. So this thing happens. And this is so amazing. It's like, where has this been all my life? Yep. And, um, oh my goodness. Kevin, okay, can you stay on for four more hours? No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just like, or come back or something because this is I'd like, love to. 
so exciting to and and identifying with it and letting everyone get exposed to this because there are so many things that are out there i keep telling you guys that we can communicate with the other side Yes, Absolutely. Can. It's here today and it's just growing in the ways that we can do it. And it keeps changing for me. And like I said, with um, where I always said I was just a, a tarot reader and I'm psychic. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden God goes, well, here, now you get to see them. Now you Absolutely. get to describe them and now you, you get to communicate with them. And it just wow. is possibility for you guys to do it too. Like Kevin said, Everybody yep. has an ability. We need yep. to go ahead and use it. And Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I tell, oh this goodness. is what I tell my students. When I am working with, uh, say, brand new healers or psychics or maybe even brand new um, young mediums that are trying to develop, I tell them, you know, this is how I was. When I entered my church and had no clue what it was, uh, and I fell in love with it and realized I was home, but I thought, how how do these psychics and mediums and healers become, how, did God give them this ability? And I then I really started realizing a lot of them had started developing. And so they took all these courses. So I ran all over town. I ran all over state. I drove out of state. I flew out of state. I flew out of country to go anywhere I could find a course that seemed like it would teach me something new I'd never heard of. And I tell my students, uh, I give you permission for the first one year to go crazy and take every class there is because I want you to experience every type of metaphysical expression, fairies, aliens, uh, dimensional DNA shifting, healing, psychic, what, I don't, crystals, uh, ayahuasca, go try it all. And then after that year, I want you to focus on when you look back in your year, what themes or topics or classes did you take that excited you, that stirred your spirit, and that's what you need to focus on as your gift and start with one of them and really promise to just focus on that for one solid year. Do not add anything to it. I know we all want to. I'm an overachiever. I did. Yes. Yeah. And I probably could be further along, but I can't help myself. I, I still do it. And uh, but I'm telling you, the people who devoted those students, they have skyrocketed beyond the students that did not focus and that tried to study a lot of different things over many years. So you really have to try to master your healing gift for a year or two before really you push into more psychic or mediumistic uh, aspects of the work. So that's what I encourage people to do. And now that's really true because I have one particular um, student that um, takes everything, everything, yep. like meet up, meet up uh, class. Like you sure it wasn't me? You know, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, she me. takes it. But um, I'm like, once she settles down, I'm like, that's fine. But um, yeah. uh, once you find what you really want to do, and yep. then we'll go with that. But Good. yeah, that's a, amazing. So, hey, you having any events or do you have online events? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about yes. where you're going to be? Yes. Where can we see you? I'm very excited because uh, this will be the first time I'm presenting at both spiritualist camps in the United States. The Camp Chesterfield up in, I believe it's Anderson, Indiana. And that will be July 28th. And I'm presenting, make sure I get my title right. Precipitation Mediumship, Rediscovering History and Your Hidden Potentials. Okay, mm -hmm. so I love that title. And basically, I'm presenting my journey, all of my research from, say, ancient biblical times to modern day and where I see the phenomena moving, which is really uh, my friend in England. And uh, just to really uh, show the incredible amount of intelligence in the phenomena. You know, if, if mediumship is to be uh, helpful, it needs to be evidential. And right. this work is not only gorgeous, it is not only uh, unique, and uh, it definitely is, is uh, well, it's, I'm not going to say it's fresh and new because it's been going on for a long time. But I will say it's so unique and so transformational. It's so powerful that it literally is a healing tool just by the demonstration because you're not only proving that there is continuity of life, 
You're also proving your loved ones are not annihilated. They're right there and they're, they're around you. And even those that you were talking about early today that you may not have talked about in 10 or 15 years, but they signed their name on the card, you know that they're literally with you at every moment. And you also can see humor in the phenomena. So you get a very dynamic sense of intelligence and personality in the phenomena, which is so transformational. Uh, art and writing is beautiful. I love it. Who doesn't, like, who doesn't love an art museum? But this phenomena, this art, takes it to a whole new level and really it just transforms people. It, it has the power to change lives. And that's why I'm passionate because it goes right in line with all my ministerial work and everything I say on Sunday mornings. Love it. So, Andy, you're going to, all the links are on yep. our page and everything. We're also Thank going you. to upload it to YouTube, to the Psychic Life channel. And Perfect. So we'll get it out there. Also, I really feel like Andy, he needs to, to uh, meet Lainey, who's in Florida. <laughs> oh, that's we'll tell you about good. her. She's amazing. That, amazing. That would great be wonderful. Connection. Uh, she's working in a, in a music thing to heal, to heal the earth. And, wow. um, but anyway, uh, she's in Cape Coral, so we're you're a little Wonderful. bit off there. But um, I had to laugh when you said Anderson, uh, um, Indiana, because uh, that's what, that was the last name that I was talking about. <laughs> oh well, I knew that. And I knew that, right? Find me. I'm psychic. There you are. You are psychic. Hey, well, Ms. we want to thank you. Yes. Real quick, just real quick. I didn't mention that I'm also right after Camp Chesterfield, July 31st, I'm going to be doing the same presentation at Lilydale uh, Spiritualist Assembly there. So I definitely would love for the viewers to come check that out. And uh, just FYI, my uh, website host informed me today my website is down of all divine timing. So my website should be back up in 24 hours. So there was a server glitch today. Okay. Do you have Facebook? Yes, I do. I have a, if you look me up, Kevin Lee Medium, you'll find my Facebook timeline. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So you guys can go in and yes. find out all about that. Well, I'm, I'm ready to like, to go and put things together and do which would be, you know, my, my family would probably really laugh that this is an art artistic mm -hmm. endeavor of some do sort it. here since do I'm it. very not. And they are. <laughs> so, I love it. Do it. And but, you're not doing it. Spirit is. That's the best part. I know. Thank goodness. It's going to be right? good. <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Debbie. Just, thank, you, thank you, Andy. Thank you so and much. Good to see you, Jacqueline. Uh, thank you. Good to see you, too. Thank you for everything. Okay, you guys. To our viewers, we want to thank you so much for um, coming in and experiencing this with us. Carlos. Yes, thank you, everyone. Let's do it. Carlos is in the house. We have to do that. He's like our norm on Cheers. We'll see you guys on Friday the 13th, and then you'll hear a lot of my ghost stories, okay? Uh, Jackie, love you very much. Love you guys. And um, we will talk to you later, okay? So glad that you'll be able to be with us each time. Yep. Andy. Yep. Hey, my love. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's get cracking on that next book, okay? Right. All yep. right, you guys. We're going to go to the lobby, and so, Kevin, you can stay on, and Thank we're you. going to just say goodbye to everybody. Thank you for being Bye, here. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.